take our Bibles and come to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Right. Brother Chuck had me scared there for a second because his verse, first verse, was from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Yeah. I was like, well, man, I hope you don't have my message. I might find me something else to preach. <laughs> and so, uh, fortunately, uh, I'm going to be a little earlier in the chapter than what he was, and so we should be fine. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 2. Now, you may wonder why I got two Bibles up here. Uh, the big Bible here, my inner leaf, has got the sermon outline I'm going to preach. But uh, the smaller Bible has big letters so that I can actually read. <laughs> I'm finding that as I get older and, uh, and, and struggle with this, uh, this diabetes, uh, that uh, eyesight becomes uh, more and more of a challenge uh, with each uh, annual eye exam. All right, so uh, we're coming to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I just want to say that it's uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Um, I can remember a time where uh, uh, being in the house of the Lord wouldn't have been real high on my priority list <laughs> as far as bringing in the new year. Amen. And uh, out in the world tonight, uh, uh, folks are out having parties and balls and all these different things. Uh, a lot of folks uh, braving the cold weather in New York City tonight, waiting for the uh, the, the ball to drop there at, the, at Times Square and so forth and yeah. all across the land folks are are making what we call New Year's resolutions <laughs> yeah. yeah New Year's resolutions mm -hmm. fat folks is wanting to get skinny <laughs> out of shape <laughs> folks <laughs> is wanting to hit the gym yeah. you know people's wanting to stop smoking cigarettes right. or stop drinking sodas or stop mm -hmm. doing this that or the other and you know all these uh, New Year's resolutions right but I'm afraid that the real issue is that most of them need a new birth solution. Amen. Yeah, new Year's on. resolutions are fine, yeah. right. but if you're not saved, turning over a new leaf of reformation right. isn't going to do you any good, my friend. Right. You need a new birth solution. Amen. You know, a few weeks ago, uh, we went through John chapter 3, and we talked about the new birth. And Jesus said that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen, and so you can make all the New Year's resolutions that you want. Right. Um, you can turn over all the leaves that you want. You can stop all the bad habits that you want. None of that will ever get you to the Amen. kingdom of God. Amen. The only thing that will ever get you to the kingdom of God is when you as a sinner, by faith, come to God, acknowledging the sinner that you are, right. and placing all your faith, all your hope, and all your trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ Amen. on Calvary's cross. Amen. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Amen. Listen, my hope tonight is in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's not in the fact that I'm a Baptist. It's not in the fact that I'm a preacher. Uh, it's not in the fact of any other humanistic thing you can come up with. Right. It's in the fact that Jesus Christ went to Calvary's cross as God manifests in the flesh and died on that cross in my place as a substitute for my sins, was buried, and rose again the third day for my justification. That's what my hope is in tonight. Amen. And that's Amen. what your hope ought to be in as well. Amen. Nevertheless... As the world parties it out and brings in the new year in a, in a, in a sinful manner, right. as the body of Christ, we've gathered here together to try to bring this new year in in a spiritual man Amen. manner. Amen. And so I want to give you some words of encouragement tonight that I hope might be a blessing and challenge you. You know, uh, as Pastor Gibson was praying tonight, uh, he mentioned the fact that of, of successes in 2017 and failures in 2017. And there's some things uh, this year that you and I, we did right. Yeah. There were some good things about this year. Yeah. But there was also some things that you and I did wrong. That's right. yeah. Yeah. There were some bad things yeah. about this year. And my hope whenever a new year comes is the fact that it can be a better year than the previous year. Amen. Amen. Man, there's just something psychological about turning the page of that calendar and having that blank calendar for January 1st. You know, I, I finished uh, uh, the book Revelation today and wrapped up uh, the New Testament, and I'm looking forward that tomorrow, on January 1st, it's going to be back to Genesis again. Amen. And I'm hoping so that this time, God will show me some things through Genesis that he didn't show me last time. Right. As I move out of... Uh, Genesis and go into Exodus and Leviticus and work my way through the Bible again and 
in back up at Revelation once again. I hope that he'll show me some things in those books that I didn't see last year either. Praise the Lord, bro. Uh, I don't know how many gospel tracts I handed out last year, but this year I hope I hand out more. Amen, bro. I didn't right. preach on the streets as often as I should have last year. I hope I preach on them more this year. All right. Uh, listen here. Uh, I wasted too much money on foolishness as far as this world's concerned that should have gone towards the kingdom of God. I'm hoping this year I do better as far as my giving. Uh, I hope this year I'm a little bit sweeter to my wife than I've been this year. She deserves better. I hope I'm a little less mean to my children this year than I was last year. I'm not sure if they deserve better or not, but I'm still going to try to be nicer. Amen, <laughs> and so I'm hoping that 2018 can be a better year than 2017. I'm hoping I sin less this year. Amen. Yeah. I sinned to plenty in 2017. I'm hoping that I sin less in 2018. I hope I, I find that highway of holiness that Brother Chuck was just yeah. talking about a few minutes ago. That was good. Uh, uh, that was what, what was that, Brother? That was Isaiah what? 35. <coughs> 35 what, Stephen? 35 8. 35 8. Hey, I want to go back and meditate on that verse. Highway of holiness. Highway yeah. of holiness. Now, listen here. We all need some more holiness in our Amen. lives. Brother. Yes, sir. Right. But as we hope and aspire for 2018 to be a better year than 2017, I want to say that the devil's going to do his best oh, yeah. to put some roadblocks and some yeah. obstacles ah, in our yeah. way. Right. Mm -hmm. And he's going to try to take us out like he's already taken some out. And he's going to at least try to discourage us or depress us so that when we're sitting here on December 31st of 2018, we're looking back on a year of failure instead of a year of success. Mm. Mm. And so we ought to be mindful of that, that this coming up year is not going to be a bed of roses. It's going to be a year filled with challenges. But by the grace of God, we can overcome those Amen. challenges. Amen. That's right. This evening, with the help of the Lord... I'd like to preach on this thought for a few moments. Don't get tangled up in 2018. Yeah. Don't get tangled up right. in 2018. Notice, if you will, here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, <clears throat> Paul says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Oh, yeah. Now notice how that kind of parallels just a little bit with uh, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of what? His might. His might, yeah. not your might. Right. Uh, listen right. here. The arm of flesh will fail you. Sure Ye will. dare not trust your own. Right. And so listen here. We better make sure that our trust and confidence tonight is not in ourselves and not in our flesh, but it's in the Lord and in the power of His might. Amen. Amen. He says here, be strong in the grace of that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Uh, notice here that Paul, <clears throat> as a mentor to Timothy, who was a young pastor, was basically encouraging this young man of God to take the things that he had learned and to pass them on to other people. Now, I'm not going to sit here and be all legalistic with you and say that it's a sin to go to a Bible college or that it's a sin to go to a seminary or that it's a sin to get higher education. <clears throat> uh, I've been to a Bible institute, I've been to a Bible college, and I've been to a Bible seminary. And uh, uh, as a result, I've got some pieces of paper that I can hang on the wall. But let me say something to you. The foundation of everything I learned about God, Jesus Christ, and the Bible was sitting in the local church at the feet of a local church Bible-believing pastor who taught me which book was the right book and explained to me how to rightly divide that book. Amen, bro. Amen. I'll eternally be grateful to Carl Marshall Baker, pastor of Calvary Baptist Church in Beaufort, South Carolina, for teaching this old sinner how to read, believe, understand, and at least try to live that book. Thank you. Amen. 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 The best place for you to learn the Bible is in a Bible-believing local church with a Bible-believing pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Amen. brother. The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, 
The same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Amen. Um, if the Lord lets me make it till September, I will have been saved for 30 years. Praise the Lord. I got saved in September of 1988. And so if I make it to September, I'll have 30 years of salvation. And by the grace of God for the past 30 years, I have done what I could to take what God gave to me and to pass it on to others. And by the same grace of God, some of those same others are out there preaching and teaching it right now. Praise the Lord. I encourage you to do the same. Go thou and do likewise. Hey, listen here. You want to find something to do in 2018? I'll tell you what you can do. Go find somebody. Find a young man if you're a man. Find a young woman if you're a, a, a woman. And pour in your life into that individual. And invest in them. Mentor them. Disciple them. And raise them up to do something for Jesus Christ. I tell you what, uh, I used to uh, have a, an old door knocking partner when I was there in Buford, uh, Brother Jody Brad. And Brother Jody Brad uh, was uh, uh, the assistant pastor, still is the assistant pastor to Brother Baker there. And Brother Jody was one of my instructors in Bible Institute. Listen here, I dreaded his church history books. Or tests, rather, his church history tests. Because listen here, it wasn't no matching or true and false. It was filling some blanks. And there was just too many blanks, Brother Jody. Well, listen to your Brother Jody and I used to go out door knocking together. And Brother Jody told me one day, he said, the reason why he liked going door knocking with me was because I was young, excited, and full of zeal. Right. And he said, as you get older in the Lord and you start to lose some of that excitement yeah. uh, over being saved and so forth, you're like that coal in the pit that's gotten too far from the fire and you're starting to fade out a little bit. But you know what? If you move that coal back closer to the fire so that it gets near those other coals, it starts lighting back up and heating back up again. Yeah. And he said he liked going door knocking with me because he got his coal lit again. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I tell you what, maybe tonight you need to get your coal lit again. Yeah. Go right. nuzzle up to someone that's on fire for God. And if you are on fire for God... Go find somebody whose flame has started to fizzle out just a little bit and go nuzzle up to them and get them back on fire again. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's do better in 2018 than we did in 2017. Mm. Verse 3. Is this going to be easy? No. Because if it was going to be easy, Paul wouldn't have said this. He says, Thou therefore endure hardness. Do you see that? Yeah. Endure hardness. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now what's a soldier do? Soldiers fight wars, my friend. That's right. Over in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5, Paul says, The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty unto God under the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, listen here. The weapons of our what? War. Warfare. We're at war, my friend. Big time. It's a spiritual battle. And too many Christians are sleeping on the job. Yep. Awake to righteousness and sin not. For some have not the knowledge of God. I speak that to your shame. Right. It's right. time to wake up, Christian. Right. 2018's upon us. Work, wild as day. The night cometh when no man can work. Mm -hmm. And so it's time to get busy for the Lord. That thou mayest war a good warfare, Paul told Timothy in another place. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now watch verse 4, because verse 4 is our text tonight. No man that warreth entangleth himself with what? The affairs, the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Now listen here. You enlisted in the Lord's army when you got saved. He received you into his outfit. He's the captain of our salvation. He's given us spiritual armor, that helmet of salvation, that, sh that breastplate of righteousness, our loins girded about with the truth, that shield. Uh, listen here. He's given us the Word of God, which is the sword of the Spirit. So He's given us those weapons which are not carnal, but they're mighty and able to pull down those strongholds. He's outfitted us for warfare. Sure is. Amen. But you know what we're doing? We're sitting on the beach sipping tea, evidently. Oh, yeah. 
while the whole world goes to hell around us. Now, I'm not saying that specifically to you, because I know that I'm talking to some faithful men of God here tonight. But I'm talking about the church of Jesus Christ in general, as far as professing born-again believers. While the world goes to hell around us, we're more focused on the affairs of this life, and we are not pleasing him that chose us to be soldiers. You know why? We're tangled up. We're tangled up. He said, no man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. You can't please God if you're not doing your God-called duty as a soldier when you're tangled up with the affairs of this life. That's right. I want to challenge you tonight. Don't get tangled up in 2018. That's right. Just don't do it. Don't get tangled up. Listen here, I want to give you four things tonight that if you're not careful, and if I'm not careful, the devil will use these four things to get us entangled with the affairs of this life so that we cannot please the very one who has called us to be soldiers. We will not war a good warfare if we get tangled up. First of all, tonight I want to say this. The first thing that we better not get tangled up with is the politics of this secular world. Amen, the politics of this secular world. Now, tonight, as I preach, understand that I am very guilty of probably all four of these things that I'm going to mention tonight. Yeah. So yeah. when I preach, I know you're going to think, well, man, Brother John, you're guilty of that. Exactly. That's why I'm preaching it. Because I need this as much as you need it. I need the Lord to stir me up by way of remembrance Amen. as much as you need the Lord to stir you up by way of remembrance. Right. Now listen here. If you look at my social media, whether it's my Twitter feed or my Instagram or especially my Facebook, if you look at my social media accounts, there's no doubt that I like to talk about politics. You look at my news feed, you'll see all kinds of stuff. You know, as far as me... Uh, saying things about President Trump or about the liberal Democrats and all this different stuff that goes on as far as politics and so forth. But let me say something to you. One thing I've discovered about myself, if I'm not careful, it's very easy for me to get entangled right. with the politics of this secular world. I hear you, I hear you, brother. Right? Right. <clears throat> and if you're not careful, the same thing will happen to you too. Exactly. Now, we've all got our political opinions. Political opinions are like armpits. Yep. Everybody's got them, and they all stink. Yeah. Sure do, bro. And listen here, I don't care if it's right wing or if it's left wing. It's all part of the same corrupt bird. Amen, Amen bro. When Amen. we talk about politics, let me say something to you. It's the Republicans of the president's own party that have given him more fits That's than the right. Democrats ever That's thought right. about. Amen. And so one thing President Trump has definitely done is he has exposed the corrupt right. political establishment of Washington, D.C., and he has clearly shown that the Republicans and the Democrats are all oh, part God. of the same corrupt system. Amen. 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 Drain Amen. the swamp. You just need to nuke that swamp. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't know that you'll ever drain it. That's right. That's but nevertheless, I've noticed that over the last couple of years, especially during the presidential campaign and now President Trump's first year in office, uh, I hate to say it, if you went back and counted all my Facebook posts and you counted up the number of those that were about politics versus those that were about the Lord, I'm ashamed to tell you tonight that if you did that, you would probably find out that I spent more time talking about politics than I did the Bible or the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. wow. Amen. You know what that shows? I was too tangled up in 2017. I'm not saying that God didn't use me in 2017, but he didn't use me like he wanted to use me because I was too focused on other things. How about you? How much time did you spend on the politics of this secular world? Uh, listen here. Uh, I support the president. I'm glad tonight that he's in the Oval Office. I'm glad that Hillary Clinton didn't win. As far as I'm concerned, she's the most corrupt politician that's ever walked the face of the earth. Uh, if Satan had a sister, she'd be it. 
<laughs> That's right. I'm telling you, if the right. devil had a wife, right. that would be his missus. Yeah, right. That's just how I feel. Uh, you can disagree with that. That's fine. Yeah. Those of you watching out there uh, in, in Internet land can disagree. That's fine. I'm just telling you, if he had a sister or a wife, she'd be it. Yeah. And so I'm glad that she lost. Me too. I wouldn't even care if the Russians did collude with Trump. I'm still glad she lost, even if there was collusion. And so, but nevertheless, despite my support for the Donald and my disdain for crooked Hillary, nevertheless, I just want to be clear tonight that my focus and your focus doesn't need to be on the politics of this secular world. Amen. It needs to be on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I remember years ago when I was a kid when Jerry Falwell came along and was supporting Ronald Reagan and had the moral majority. Brother right. Gibson, right. you remember the moral uh, majority and all that? Uh, listen here. What a great movement that was. Yeah, well. Except for one thing. Did it ever get rid of abortion? No. Nope, sure didn't. Nope. Did it stop the progression of perversion as far as this uh, LBGT crap? Nope, didn't stop that at all, did it? If anything, things have gotten worse since the moral majority. Yes, it has. Uh, listen here, we thought that we were uh, electing a real evangelical in George W. Bush. Yeah. How'd that work out? <laughs> it didn't work, work out. out at all. Nope. Boy, you talk about a, sheep, a, a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's what he's right. Right. Uh, listen here, he might be a nice man, a human being, uh, a, as a person, but his policies certainly did not represent the Christian faith that he professes to espouse. Yeah. And so uh, uh, old George W. Bush up there talked about how uh, Muslims and Christians and Buddhists and all that, how we all pray to the same God. Oh, no, we don't, Mr. President. No, we don't. No, we don't. The Muslims don't have the same God that a Christian has. Right. That's right. The Christian God has a son. The Muslim God doesn't have a son. And two gods that are different can't both be the same. Amen. Let's get it straight. But for years, going all the way back to Reagan, and then the first Bush, and then the second Bush, uh, we as Christians, we have looked for political saviors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's no such thing as a political savior. That's right. It do, listen here. It doesn't matter to me what happens in those midterm elections. I don't care if the Democrats take the House back or take the Senate back. It really doesn't matter. What have the Republicans ever done? Like I said, the president's got more flack from his own party than he has from the Democrats. Yeah. And so listen here, we need to get our minds and hearts and attention off the politics of this secular world and get it back on the gospel. Do you know how you're going to change this world? You're going to change this world by every sinner that you help get birthed into the kingdom of God. Amen. That's how you'll change this world. Hey, listen here, uh, you want to stop abortion? i tell you how you stop abortion. Start winning young boys and young girls to the Lord Jesus Christ. Get at them before they hit that age where they start fornicating. Yeah. And then after they fornicate and they want to cover up the mistake, they take the easy way out and go kill and snuff out the life of that innocent unborn baby. That's what you do. That's how you stop abortion. You ain't never going to legislate righteousness in this country. And that's our problem as Christians. We have deceived ourselves into thinking that we can legislate righteousness. We're never going to be able to do that. And so we need to watch out that we don't get entangled with the politics of this secular war, world. I remember uh, when I first got saved in the late 80s, you know, all the rage was the pro-life movement and all this stuff. And people spent so much time going to pro-life marches and getting involved with all these pro-life activities. And listen, Nobody on the face of this planet is more against abortion than I am. I think it's the most wicked thing in this world. As much as I despise uh, the, the LGBT thing, I despise abortion because God gave seven things that he hates. Mm -hmm. Seven of them. That's, that's an right. abomination. And one of them was the shedding no, of innocent, innocent blood. blood. And there's nothing more innocent yeah. than the blood of an unborn baby. And so nobody uh, hates abortion more than I do. But listen here, I don't need to go down and yoke up with the local Catholic church to be part of their pro-life march. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't need to yoke up with Rome to oppose abortion. 
I don't need to go hold hands with Catholics and Mormons and JWs and all this ecumenical stuff because that's what the modern contemporary church is doing. It's breaking down the walls of separation. Remember promise keepers? Yeah. All the ecumenical stuff? Breaking down the walls of separation so that we can let go of our doctrinal divides. Uh, no, thank you. I'm going to keep mine. I'm going to keep mine. I'm going to keep my King James Bible. Amen. Charlton Heston said that as far as the Second Amendment, that you'd have to pry his gun out of his cold, dead hands. Well, I don't own any guns. I, I'm pro-Second Amendment. I just, I've never bought a gun. And so, uh, look, I'm a corpsman for crying out loud. Amen? <laughs> you know, corpsman, we don't kill people. We fix people. That's right. <laughs> so, at any rate, uh, I'm not against you having a gun. I'm for you having a gun. Matter of fact, since I don't have one, if I get in trouble, I want you to come save me. <laughs> but, uh, but nevertheless, though, uh, listen here. That's how I feel about my Bible. You ain't taking my Bible from me. Amen. You can outlaw it and say that it's hate speech yeah. and all this stuff. You can say that it's a myth, a fairy tale, whatever you want to say. I don't care. I'm not giving up my Bible for you or anyone else. Amen. Yes. And so I'm against abortion, but I'm not going to go yoke up with uh, false religions to oppose it. And so the politics of this secular world, the politics of this secular world. Now, notice, uh, second of all, I want to say this. Not only are, do we need to be careful of the politics of this secular world, but we better be careful and mindful of getting caught up with the possessions of this life. The possessions of this life. And uh, what am I talking about? I'm talking about materialism. I'm talking about covetousness. You know, the Bible talks about Having these things therewith be what? Content. Content. I tell you what, one of the biggest problems in the church of Jesus Christ today is unthankfulness and a lack of contentment. Mm -hmm. And I'm preaching to myself because, listen here, I've got to have the new iPhone when it comes out. That's just how I am. I love technology. I like that stuff. I like messing around with it and watching YouTube videos to learn how to operate it, use it, and stuff like that. I just love that stuff. It's, it's an interest of mine. <clears throat> but you know what? There wasn't nothing wrong with last year's iPhone. And there wasn't nothing wrong with the one year before. Oh, wait a minute. Except there was because they were slowing down. I don't know if y'all have seen in the news. Yeah. Apple's in all kinds of trouble right now. A lot of problems. <coughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Because they admitted that with the new operating systems, they slow down the phones. Yeah. You know why well, they the do that, of course? Yeah, yeah. so that you'll go buy the new one. <laughs> yep. See, they don't got to worry about me because I'm going to go buy the new one anyway. <laughs> they don't got to slow down my phone. Uh, I, I'm going to get the new one. You know, that's just how I am. But you know what? That's a flaw in my flesh. That's a flaw in my flesh. You know, with me, it's, uh, it's smartphones. Uh, with you, maybe it's a car. Man, there's some folks, they can't keep a car two years. Car gets 30, 40, 50,000 miles. They got to get rid of it, you know? Uh, some folks, uh, it might be uh, some other thing. You know, materialism. You know, uh, down in South Carolina where I used to live at, everyone loves to fish and shrimp. Everybody wants that bass boat. If you're going to have a bass boat, you got to have a truck to pull the boat, right? <laughs> and so uh, I, I don't care what it is. But nevertheless, be careful that you get so wrapped up with material possessions and the possessions of this life that you can't do the things for God that he called you to do as a soldier. Yeah. You know, um, I, I just uh, I, I took a part-time job that I'm going to start on Tuesday. Uh, I'm going to be working over at the, at the Lifeway Christian Bookstore there in Chesapeake. And so y'all come out and say hi to me. <laughs> and uh, one of the reasons I did that was because over the last couple of years, we've allowed ourselves to get more credit card debt than I want to be in. Mm. The borrower is servant to the lender. And I've got two more years before I can retire from the Navy. And when those two years are up, I want to be able to retire and not have to keep staying in the Navy just because I've got more debt than I can pay out of my retirement check. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so for the next couple of years, by the grace of God, I'm going to hopefully work off some of that debt and be in a better position as far as retirement when it's time to, to call it quits as far as the Navy. Mm -hmm. And so, but you know what? Uh, if I hadn't been caught up with the possessions of this life, and living beyond my means, then maybe I wouldn't have had to have done that. But you know what? You do what you got to do to take care of your family. And so uh, I want to say that in 2018, we need to learn to be content with some things. You know, uh, it's, it's shameful if you come to my house and see how many Bibles I've got. And man, I've got them with ostrich leather. 
I've got them with lamb skin. I've got them with goat skin. I've got them with pig skin. I've got bonded leather. I've got vinyl. I've got Schofields. I've got Ruckman's. I've got Common Man's. You know, I'm thinking about getting me a Thompson Chain reference. That's one that I don't have right now. But, uh, you know, I, I've got all these Bibles. I, I got two of them here on the pulpit tonight. And you know what? There's people all around the world that don't even have one Bible. One Bible. Don't even have one. And here I've got, I don't even know how many. You know what that is? A lack of contentment. I'm not saying that you can't have a couple Bibles. But, you know, I, I'm on some of these Facebook pages uh, or with these, uh, 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 I forget what they're called. Uh, uh, they're like premium Bible fan pages and stuff like that. And uh, there's people there. I look at these pictures, their shells. They've got these Bibles with all these R.L. Allen Bibles. R.L. Allen is like a premium Bible publisher, you know. And these dudes, they got 15, 20, 30 of these Bibles. Allen Bibles, look, they're a couple hundred bucks a piece. They ain't cheap, my friend. And, you know, and I'm sitting there thinking, look at all those Bibles on that shelf, and ain't none of them getting read. You ain't reading 15 different Bibles. Yeah. You, ain't, you ain't using all those Bibles. Yeah. Now, I got it if you've got, like, a, a, a study Bible for preparation. Yeah, for uh, sermon preparation, you might break out your Ruckman's and your Common Man Reference and your Schofield and, right. and glean the notes from, like, three or four different ones and put together a sermon. I get that. But you know what? You ain't using 25 or 30 different Bibles, my friend. No, you just ain't content. You just ain't content. I'm guilty too, Brother Stephen. That's why I'm preaching. Listen here. I'm stepping on some of my own sacred cows tonight because I wasn't sure if y'all would do it or not, so I'm doing it for myself. <laughs> Amen. And so listen here. we got to watch out for the possessions of this life. And so don't get tangled up with the possessions of this life. Number three, let me say this. Another thing not to get caught up with is the prophecies of the sensationalists. The prophecies of the ins sensationalists. You know, years ago, late 90s, when I was pastoring in Yuma, you know what the big rage was around 98, 99? Do you remember, Brother Gibson? Y2K. Yeah. Look out yeah. for the year 2000. Right. Yeah. Computers are Boy, when the year 2000 comes, Brother Jimmy, listen here. All the computers is going to crash the airplanes is going to fall out of the yeah, sky. Yeah. Uh, you know, the sky is literally falling in 2000, January 1st, 2000. And everybody was sitting on edge, chewing on their fingernails. Now listen here. They was stocking up on uh, uh, dry foods and dehydrated yeah. foods and Boy, cases they, and cases of yeah, bottled yeah. water and all that. They was acting like a bunch of Mormons waiting for Armageddon. Yep. Yeah. Yep, right. In case you didn't know, that's what the Mormons do. If it ever does hit the fan, go right to Mormon's house. Because I promise you, he's got plenty of food in his basement. Amen. That's right. Because they've been stocking up for Armageddon for decades. Yep. And so if you need food, go visit a Mormon. But listen here. Y2K, the prophecies of those sensationalists. I remember also uh, the black helicopters. <clears throat> remember how concentration camps were being set up in Wyoming and Montana and all these western states. And the black helicopters was going to land kick in your door, leave you and your family off in handcuffs, and take you off to a concentration camp where you could be re-educated for the new world order. Now, don't get me wrong. Maybe that will happen someday. But my gosh, people have been living in fear of that stuff for years. And listen here. They'll spend hours and hours and hours watching YouTube videos, searching out the next conspiracy, instead of getting out on a street corner and yeah. lifting up their voice like a trumpet and telling lost sinners how to know their sins are forgiven and how to go to heaven when they die. Listen here. Leave the prophecies of the sensationalists alone and get busy for God. Who cares if the earth is flat? Yeah, there you go. Good gracious. You know how you know the earth isn't flat? Because if the earth was flat, every cat in this world would have pushed everything over the edge by now. Uh -huh. And so flat earth, that, that's the latest thing. And then some folks get caught up with the geocentricity. I don't know if y'all even have heard about geocentricity. You know, geocentricity... Versus uh, Helen, what's it, heliocentricity? heliocentricity? Yeah, heliocentricity. Thanks, Byron. So, heliocentricity, the sun is the center of everything, and the earth and the other planets rotate around the sun. Heliocentricity versus geocentricity. 
the earth is fixed, it doesn't move, and it's the sun and everything else going around us. And there are people that spend hours and hours and hours on Facebook and Twitter either preaching a flat earth or preaching heliocentricity or geocentricity, making mountains out of molehills. Uh, some, with some folks, it's the gap theory. They'll, they'll spend hours and hours and hours arguing about the gap theory. I don't give two rips about a gap. Yeah. All right. You understand that? I believe that there is a gap between Genesis 1-1 and 1-2. Half our uh, 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 folks tuned in just turned off the broadcast. <laughs> oh, he's a gapper. <laughs> you know, and so I believe in the gap theory. But you know what? It is a theory. A theory. You cannot prove a gap from the Bible. That's right. Now, there are verses that prevent, present some strong circumstantial evidence, and that's why I believe in the gap theory. But you know what? You can't prove it. Now, I can prove that Jesus Christ died for my sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. I can prove that from a King James Bible. Uh, I can prove that he was virgin born. Uh, listen here, I can uh, prove that it's his blood that made an atonement for my soul. Amen. Uh, I can prove that as a member of the church, I'm bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh, that I'm part of his body. Uh, I can prove that I'm sealed to the day of redemption by the Spirit of God. Amen. There's lots of things I can prove from that Bible. The gap theory ain't one of them. <laughs> and I believe it. I know what Isaiah 45 says. I know what Jeremiah 4 says. I know what 2 Peter 3 says. I know what Genesis 1 says. I've read all that stuff. And I've read the books for it and I've read the books against it. But you know what? I'm not going to get tangled up with it. I'm not going to make a mountain out of a molehill and break fellowship with someone who doesn't believe in the gap because that's what some folks do. Yeah. There's some folks out there, if you believe the gap, they won't have nothing to do with you. And then there's other folks, if you don't believe the gap, they won't have nothing to do with you. Guess what? Both sides are wrong, and both sides are entangled with nonsense. Amen. Amen. You're welcome. Amen. Amen. Don't let it get too quiet here now. I think that I've done hit a nail, and I'll focus on it. Amen. Amen. Listen here. The prophecies of the sensationalists. Alex Jones on the Internet. You talk about a conspiracy nut. You can't understand anything he says unless you make yourself a tinfoil hat. <laughs> Uh, Watch out, though. Maybe lightning might strike that antenna. <laughs> then you'll get your brain fried for good. Listen here. Watch out for that stuff. You know, um, take all of that with a grain of salt. Right. Who shot JFK? What does it matter? He's dead. Whether it was one shooter, two shooters, three shooters, whether it was George Bush, or whether it was the CIA, whether it was the Cubans, whether it was the Mafia, whether it's LBJ, at the end of the day, JFK is dead. Yeah. All right. Now go get busy for God. Order you some more chick tracks. Buy you some more scripture magnets for your car. Go find you a place that you can witness and tell the old, old story. Don't get tangled up in 2018 with the prophecies of the sensationalists because all that's going to do is cause you not to be a soldier that's able to please the one that caused you or called you to be a soldier. Amen. And then last of all, let me give you this and we'll be done because I think I've given you all that you can handle. The fourth thing that you don't want to get tangled up in 2018 is this, the power of this sinful flesh. Amen. The power of this sinful flesh. You know, when we talk about a new year, <coughs> we talk about, uh, I talked earlier about a new birth, how you must be born again. But you know what? More than anything else, what you and I as Christians need for 2018 is we need to put off the old man yeah. and his works and put on the new, the new man yeah. that's renewed in the image of him that created him. Amen, that's what we need to do. Now listen here. There's a lot of Christians that have shipwrecked their lives. And they're no longer in church. They're no longer doing anything uh, for God. Uh, just like Paul talked about in 1 Corinthians 9.27, they've made themselves a castaway. 
Right. They've put themselves on the shelf. Mm -hmm. You and I know that there's been people that have walked out these doors and they're not here because they're in other churches and they're still serving God. They love God, doing the right thing. But you know that the majority of the folks that have walked out those doors never come back. They're not in any kind of church at all. They ain't doing nothing. And listen here, uh, they're probably not in a watch night service tonight. And they might be out there bringing in the new year with the rest of the world the way the rest of the world's doing it. And so, by the grace of God, that could be you or me in a heartbeat. What would it take for you to quit? Would it be the loss of your spouse or the loss of one of your children? Maybe the loss of your job? Maybe a catastrophic health diagnosis that you weren't expecting. Maybe some type of financial ruin that led to bankruptcy. You know, maybe, uh, you know, becoming homeless and being out on the streets. I mean, what would it take to make you quit? Because I tell you, there's something out there that potentially can make every single one of us quit. That's true. That's right. There's something out there that potentially could cause any one of us to throw in the towel and quit on the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know what it is for you. I'm afraid to find out what it is for me. By the grace of God, I just want to keep on plugging away for the Lord in 2018. Amen. I don't want to get caught up in the power of this sinful flesh. Uh, listen here. Uh, the flesh will fail you every single time. It's got a mind of its own. Uh, Paul said, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, well, dwelleth no, no good thing. thing. For me to will is present, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. Uh, listen here. Your flesh is wicked, vile, and corrupt. Amen. That's why he's going to have to fashion our vile bodies like unto his glorious body when he comes back and receives us in the rapture. Amen? Amen. And listen here. You know how you know how corrupt your flesh is? Because when you die, they almost rush to get you embalmed. Oh, yeah. That's right. You know why? Yeah. Because the moment you die, that wicked, nasty flesh of yours starts to decay. That's right. And they got to pump out that blood and pump in that formaldehyde just to slow down the decaying process long enough for you to have a funeral within a couple of days so that your loved ones can say goodbye to you. Right. And if they didn't do that, your stench would be so bad that nobody would want to come to your funeral. That's right. Amen, brother. That's right. Yeah. Listen here. When Lazarus was dead, and had been dead for how many days? Four days. Four days. Thank you. What did, uh, I, I can't remember if it was Mary or Martha. It was one of them. Yeah. What did she say to the Lord? By now. He By now he stinketh. <laughs> Lord, it's been four days. Yeah. And listen here. They had anointed his body. With all those myrrhs and aloes and all that stuff. Right. They wrapped him up and all that. But in spite of their best efforts, Lord, he stinketh. You know what? You stink too. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You stink. <laughs> You're a stinker. <laughs> and I stink too. <laughs> we all stink. Amen. And you can bathe all you want to and Use all the foo-foo hair gel and shampoos and brush your teeth with, with, with all that minty, cinnamony, uh, uh, you know, uh, toothpaste and put that deodorant on your underarms. And, you know, uh, you know, uh, Stephen, you probably take all that baby powder and, you know, and, and sprinkle that baby powder all over so you, get, so you smell baby fresh. Do you do that for real, brother? All right, just check. Because we're going to have to talk at the church to get you straightened out if you do that. But look here, you can perfume that body and put on that aftershave. Uh, you can do all you want. You know what? You still stink. You stink. You stink because you've got vile, wicked, corrupt flesh. Right. And until Jesus comes back and fashions our vile bodies like unto his glorious body, that's what we're stuck in. That's why Paul said, absent from the body, present with the Lord. You know, uh, Paul said, uh, uh, for me to die is what? Gain. 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 You know why? Because Paul knew he was escaping this vile, right. corrupt, wicked flesh. Right. You know what's wrong with this modern philosophy of the, of the contemporary church? It's all positive. Yeah. 
It's all positive. You know, it's all grace. It's all lovey-dovey stuff. Yeah. You know, you, you hear it in the music. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, oh God, you're never going to let me down. Yeah. Never, never, never going to let me down. Yeah. And all this, you know, feel-good, fl uh, fluffy stuff. You know, uh, what's, that, what's that song? Uh, the hymn... Where, where, where the writer refers to such a worm as I. Right. What song is that? I'm, I'm having amazing, amazing grace. At the cross. Amazing At the cross. Where, there you go. That he would die for such a worm as I. You don't hear contemporary Christian songwriters talking about being worms. No, he wouldn't nope. sell. Wouldn't sell. You got that right. Yeah. But you know what? Them old hymn writers, they understood. They knew. They knew what they were, and they know what you are. And I know what I am. A filthy, God-forsaken, worthless sinner in need of a Savior. Amen. And so he says here in 2 Timothy chapter 2, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. My wish for you and my wish for myself in 2018 is not to get tangled up. Amen. I don't want to get tangled up with the politics of this secular world. Amen. I don't want to get tangled up with the possessions of this life. Yep. I don't want to get tangled up with the prophecies of the sensationalists. I don't care if the earth is flat or not. When the rapture takes place, we'll all find out. Because as we go up, we can look down. And it's either going to be a sphere or it's going to be flat. And honestly, I don't even care which way it works out. Amen. And then last of all, I don't want to be tangled up with the power of this sinful flesh. And so I encourage you this evening, for all of us, let's put God first. <clears throat> like I said at the beginning of the message tonight, you know, let's hand out more gospel tracts than we did last year. Yes, sir. Let's witness more than we witnessed last year. Let's be faithful to the house of God more than we were last year. Mm -hmm. Let's be the leaders in our homes, you men, better than what we were last year. Let's have more family altars this year than we had last year. Mm -hmm. Let's give more of our resources. Let, let's give less to Apple and Taco Bell and whatever else you like, let's give less to that and more to missions and more to the kingdom of God. Amen. Let's do that. And maybe God will bless us. Amen. And most importantly, maybe this year we can bless him. Yeah. We're always saying, God bless you. God bless you, my friend. God bless you. God bless America. All that stuff. Right. Maybe it's time for us to get back to blessing God. Yeah. We're always asking him to bless us. Maybe we should bless him. Yes, Lord. And the way, the best way we can bless him is to please him that has chosen us to be soldiers. Amen. Let's bow for prayer. Amen. Our Father and our God, we're just grateful for this opportunity to be here this evening. Fathers, we say goodbye to 2017 and hello to 2018. Lord, I pray that you might help us to be faithful followers of the Lord Jesus Christ faithful soldiers. Lord, help us not to get tangled up, Lord. Help us to avoid the politics of this secular world. Uh, help us to, to avoid uh, the possessions of this life that snare, ensnare us with materialism. Uh, let's beware of the prophecies of all these sensationalists. And Lord, perhaps most importantly of all, let us not be ensnared uh, by, by the, the flesh, this sinful flesh, dear God. Uh, help us to avoid its power. And Lord, help us to walk in the Spirit. And Lord, help us to be led by the Spirit. And Lord, we just pray that we might bring forth good fruit for the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord, I don't know what time it is, Lord. It's probably somewhere around 8 o'clock or 8.30, maybe almost 9. Nine. There's still a couple of hours here, Lord, before uh, the year is over with. We still pray that you might come back this year. Amen. Even so, come Lord Jesus. What a blessing it would be to Amen. be gathered together in a watch night service like this and rise together as the body of Christ to meet you in the air. But Lord, if it's not tonight... If it's not this year, we pray that it might be the coming year. And, Lord, if it's not the coming year, we pray that it might be the year after. But whatever year it ends up being, Lord,
Father, I pray that you'd help us to be faithful until you come. The Lord will thank you, will love you, will praise you for it. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and ask these things. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's take a break. All right, let's take a break. Uh, Tom should be on his way back. Are you already back? Okay. We got some food over here. Fellowship now. Because we're going to uh, come back 